Good morning. Welcome to Online Live with me. This is Jenny Galata. I'm here in North Carolina. And uh, I am glad to see you this morning. Thank you for joining on. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, it's hard to believe, but we're on a few weeks, just a few weeks away from Thanksgiving. And then we're on to the Christmas countdown. <laughs> So it's really hard to believe we're already there. I just sometimes feel like we didn't we just do this. <laughs> but anyway, praise the Lord. I know it is much cooler here in Calif I mean in Cal um, the North Carolina. It's almost like California, but it is cooler in California, I've heard. So I know people are experiencing cooler weather, cooler weather. Praise God. That's a good thing. Amen. Good morning, Miss Donna and Mr. Ed. Thank you for watching this morning. Good to see you online. Um, we went through a time change. I know you did it, but I did. Good morning, Miss Kathy. Good to see you this morning. Um, but it's getting cooler here and, uh, so much so I gotta wear a, um, a coat. So uh, I think I'm gonna have to buy myself a parka. <laughs> anyway. That's getting colder. Um, we're continuing to stand on the word and we're standing with you in agreement. Many of you have asked for prayer in, <clears throat> excuse me, in certain areas. So we're hooked up in faith. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to believe God to change the circumstances and the situation and, and, uh, we're going to see his hand at work in those areas and watch for the move of God to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So just keep faith and keep continuing to say to the mountain to be removed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad it's uh, nice in Arizona. That's what you wanted. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you to please continue to stand in your authority in Christ. Amen. Stand in your authority. You know, um, I had the opportunity yesterday, I uh, kind of uh, ran across a, a well, I um, came across a lady uh, in the area who doesn't have any idea about standing in faith, how to stand in her authority, but uh, I tried to minister that to her. Um, hopefully, I planted some seeds. Amen. Good morning, Miss. Linda, good to see you this morning watching. <clears throat> well, uh, right as I get started, uh, I know probably some more people might try to join in. Praise God. Um, let's, uh, let's pray before we get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am so thankful for you. I am so thankful for your word. Thankful for what you've given to us and for the ability to stand on your word and that your promises never fail. Thank you, Father, that your word continues to go forth and prospers where it's sent. I give you praise, Father, and I thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives in us and that quickens us and shows us what to do and gives us that wisdom we need and direction and guidance and that we have a discerning heart and a discerning spirit that we can know right from wrong and the right choices. Father, I thank you and praise you that we have all that we need that pertains to life and godliness. You've given it to us. We just praise you and worship you for that. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for your word. And this morning we open up our hearts and our minds to receive from the Holy Ghost all that you have for us, speak to us corporately, speak to us individually. Let us be encouraged and strengthened and inspired to continue to stand in faith in Jesus name. And everybody says, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Gwen. Thank you for watching this morning. Good to see you online. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, something that we all work on, I know. Good morning, Miss Millie. Something we all work on is uh, <clears throat> patience. We all want to achieve some patience in our lives. And uh, I know sometimes it seems easier than it is at other times. We struggle a lot of times. But you and I know that faith and uh, with, with faith and patience that we inherit the promises. Amen. 
So we have to continue to stand in patience, continue to stand in faith, and believe that God is doing something no matter what we're looking at. Uh, we will not be discouraged. We will, we choose not to be discouraged. We choose not to be annoyed or frustrated in the midst of waiting. Amen. Because sometimes we can want something to happen and the change to happen immediately. Uh, it's really easy. We're, we're that microwave society, but we've got to exercise our patience. Amen. You know, endurance, which is a form of patience, produces a crown of life. So we want to stay there. We want to stay in that endurance and stay into that patience. The Bible says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, under trial for when he has stood the test. When you get through it, when it's all over, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Amen. Praise the Lord. We all want that crown of life. We want to, we want to get there to that place. You know, um, when my children were little, I had one particular child that liked to tell me all the details of everything that happened in his day or when he's telling me anything, it always had to do with details. Uh, they would tell me, uh, you know, how it happened, where it happened, who was there when it happened, how many steps it took to get there when it happened. It was very detailed. You get the picture. They were extremely detailed in those things. And, uh, you know, often... When, as parents, we would get distracted in those story times and this expla explanation of what was going on because it was so lengthy, we would lose our attention span there. And so we would get up to move on and maybe finish what we were working on or go do something. And they would turn to us and say, hey, wait a minute. The story's not finished yet. The story's not finished yet. I want you to think about that for a minute. The story's not finished yet. You know, in our life, and I know in your life, we, every one of us face situations, and we think, well, it's over. Everything has come to an end here. I, I don't know what to do. It's going to be like this always. I got this bad report I had this issue, this situation happen. Uh, I'll never be able to get that job, an, another job as good as the one I just had. I'll never be able to rectify that relationship. It's just, it, this is just where it's going to be always. I just feel so disappointed. But you know, I want to tell you the devil's a liar. The story's not over yet. Amen. You see, in the book of Joshua, when we look at that story in the Bible, the, the, the account of Joshua, and when Moses died, uh, I imagine it could have seemed to all of the Israelites that where they were in their travels, they were going to be in that place forever. It's over now. Our leader is gone. What are we going to do? We're not going to get to the promised land because our leader is gone. But no, God had something else in store because the story wasn't finished yet. Amen. Joshua came into play and he became the leader God put in. And I'm sure when Joshua got in there and he became the leader and he began, and he began to look at the situation, he hadn't been a leader before. Joshua was the ministry of helps man. He was the guy that when Moses said, do this, do that, that's what Joshua went and did. So he was following orders. But now here, everything has changed. Moses has gone on to be with the Lord. He's died. He's gone on. And now here is Joshua in charge of everybody and everything. And he's the leader. But praise God, God tells him, be strong and be of good courage. Amen? Because Joshua had already scoped out the land. He'd already gone into the land and he brought back this report. And his report was, we are well able to defeat the enemy. 
He already saw it. So there was no real reason to get discouraged. But God told him, I think it was three times in Joshua, be strong, be of good courage. Amen. See, God's not going to leave us. He's not going to uh, forget us. He's not going to leave us alone. He's going to always be right there with us and help us and get us through situations. But now here Joshua is, and here's this big challenge. He's now crossed over into the promised land and into the area. He's led the people, and there's this great big city called Jericho, walled, huge walls all around this city, and they're facing it. It's a city. Can You, I, you know, it's not even an army. It's a city, and they have to, they're going to defeat this city. And God has told him, be strong and be of good courage. You know, I looked up some references about the city. And hopefully I understood all of the references. Some of them were very difficult to get. But if I understood it correctly, there were two walls that surrounded Jericho. The outside wall was about 11 to 13 feet high and was 6 feet wide. And then they had an interior wall and it was, had towers that ranged 28 feet tall and were 30 feet wide. Now the city itself was surrounded by a wall that was on six acres of land. Now from what I read, uh, it was estimated that it was about a, a mile, a mile point four all the way around the city. And that's like right up against the wall. And you and I know that the, that they did not march right up against the wall. They marched further out of, from the wall and they marched all around the city. Now, when they approached that city, I mean, if you think about it, those are big walls and thick walls. And someone had said years ago, they had told us that they could ride a chariot across the top of one of those walls. I'm telling you, that would have been overwhelming to me. And I'm sure the Israelites, as they approached that place, they began to look at it and say, what? We're going to what? We're going to walk around this? And it's going to we're going to defeat the enemy by walking? I'm sure they were thinking this. They never voiced it because they were to be really quiet. And you can see why. Because doubt and fear and all sorts of things can come in when we're faced with situations that are look like they're overwhelming. And they were looking at this, but they, what they were seeing, they had to know that the story wasn't finished yet. They hadn't finished the story. It wasn't done. Even when they walked around the city one time, when they walked around the city three times, five times, the story wasn't finished yet. Amen. Amen. You know, you and I are facing situations in our life that seem maybe overwhelming, negative reports, some, maybe, maybe you lost your job, maybe the finances stopped, maybe you got an overwhelming amount of money that had to be paid on something you weren't expecting to pay on. Maybe there are so many situations that have come up around you that have tried to discourage you, tried to overwhelm you, but I want to tell you this morning it's the story isn't finished yet. It's not over yet. It's not done. We will find victory in the Lord no matter what we're seeing. We've got to stay focused on the word of God. Stay in faith. Trust the Lord. Amen. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality faith perceiving as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses isn't that awesome and then where we god gave us a hebrews 10 23 so let us seize and hold fast and retain Without wavering, the hope we cherish and confess our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. 
God is faithful to his word. We can't afford to justify any doubts. Like, for instance, well, if that just wouldn't have happened, look where I would be today. Well, if I would have made different choices, if I would have made different decisions in my life, things would be so much different. This wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened. Maybe I just made everything wrong, and it's always going to be this way. You know, don't speak what you hear. Don't speak what you think. Don't speak what the devil is whispering in your ears. Don't even speak what someone else is saying. Speak what God's word says. Say what he says. See, the story hasn't finished yet. It's not over. Amen. Your story, your story, say my story isn't over yet. Amen. God is able to make all grace abound unto you that you having all sufficiency in all things will abound in every good work. You see, your story isn't finished yet. He has a plan and he's going to fulfill the plan. In this situation or circumstance that you're up against did not take the Lord by surprise. He didn't go, oh my gosh, I didn't know so-and-so was going to go through that. Oh goodness, when did that happen? I must have been sleeping. God never sleeps. God never slumbers. Your story isn't finished. He's got a plan. Stay steady. Stay in faith and trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. In all things, in all things, God works for good for those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. Amen. You are the called according to his purpose. He's working things out for you. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were ordered in the furnace and put into the furnace, the story wasn't finished yet. When Saul went hunting for David, and David had to run for Saul all the time that he ran from him, trying to hide so he wouldn't be killed, the story wasn't finished yet. When Peter denied Jesus those three times, the story wasn't finished yet. Peter wasn't done. It wasn't over just because Peter denied Jesus. The story wasn't finished yet. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and left there to be devoured by the lions, the story wasn't finished yet. When Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit and he was sold as a slave and then he was put into a prison, I'm telling you, the story wasn't finished yet. He didn't finish out his story right then. When he came to realize he was in those circumstances, when these men and and of God realized that they were in those circumstances. They didn't go, well, it's all over now. Life is going to be over now. It's out with me. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. No, they stood the ground. They stood the test. They said, no matter what, we will serve God. We will do what God wants us to do. Amen. Even Jesus when he went to the cross and was buried and went to hell for three days. And then it was when he rose from the dead. But when he went, when he was crucified, the story wasn't finished yet. He came out victorious, praise God. Amen. That's something to praise God about and realize if their stories aren't finished, neither is yours. Neither is mine. Our stories are still going on. God is doing something fantastic for us. He's working things out. Trust the Lord. Amen. Second Corinthians in verse in chapter four in verse 16, it says, therefore, we do not become discouraged. We do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, exhausted and wearied through fear. We're not going to be weary through fear. We're not going to let fear come against us. Amen. Though our outer man is decaying and wasting away, our inner self is being progressively renewed day by day. Amen. For our light momentary affliction, this slight distress that we might be going through, this passing in the hour of whatever we're facing right now, 
is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, <clears throat> excuse me, excessively surpassing all comparisons, all calculations of vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. See, God is working something out. He's doing something. So we have to not allow fear or doubt or unbelief or situations to overwhelm us, overpower us. We got to look past it and see what God saw, just like Jesus saw past the cross and saw the victory at the end. You and I have to look past our situation, past our circumstance and see that there's hope, that there's victory. I'm telling you, church, I know what it's like to be discouraged. When I got here and after a few months of sitting in this house all by myself, all my friends that I know back in California, I'm sitting here day after day, night after night, all by myself. I start feeling pretty discouraged. I start feeling like, hey, I'm all alone in this place. I don't have anyone to talk to. I don't have anyone to visit. I don't have anywhere to go with anyone. I begin to look discouraged and feel discouraged. It's real easy to start feeling that way when you're all by yourself and you begin to look at your circumstances and you go, well, I guess God's done with me because he moved me all the way here. And, and you know, you can begin to think like that, begin to get an attitude like that. I had to grab a hold of my bootstraps, pull them up and say, no, God's not done. I'm not done. God's got something in store. I'm just getting the ground prepared. I'm plowing the field and that's what I'm doing. And you've got to look at that way in your situation. Plow the field with your faith. Keep going. Yes, discouragement's going to try to come. Tears might even flow. Disappointment might try to set in. Depression might even try to come. But God has a plan. That plan isn't ended just because of your situation. It's not over yet. The story's not over yet. We must keep faith alive. We must keep our confessions on the word of God. I'm just trying to tell you something this morning to encourage you, to spur you on in faith. Amen. We got to keep our conscience uh, uh, and our countenance positive. We got to keep hope. The story isn't finished yet. Amen. And I want to end with this because I'm coming to the end. I want to finish with these particular scriptures. And you can write these down, study them, look them up later, quote them for yourself because they're inspiring and they help encourage us because God gave us his word to establish us, to ground us, to help us, to lead us and to give us hope. For the next step in our life. Amen. So Galatians 6, 9. It says, And let us not grow weary of doing good. See, don't grow weary in the middle of your situation and quoting the word and standing on the word and staying in faith. It's not in vain. It says, For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Amen. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, whatever I do in word or deed, I do it all, everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You know, whatever you do, if you're sitting there and you go, thank you, Father, for this depression. I'm just so thankful I'm depressed. No, that's not giving God glory. It's giving God glory for what he's doing in the spirit. Thank you, God, for delivering me out of the situation. Thank you, God, for healing my body. Thank you, God, for that extra set of finances that's coming into my household. All my bills are paid. All my, th all my things, I'm debt free in the name of Jesus. I am free and free and free. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then you've got Philippians 3 and verse 12. And it says, not that I've already attained. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm not there yet. We might not be there yet. We might not have it all. We might not even have our physical uh, uh, senses are, you know, lined up with the word of God yet or have already arrived at our goal. But we press on. To take a hold of that which Christ Jesus has took a hold for me. Amen. God's, Jesus has already grabbed a hold of it. It already belongs to us. 
So press on. Keep pressing on. Keep that faith alive. Keep saying the word. Keep getting in there and going for it. Don't let the enemy rob you of your joy. Don't let the enemy rob you of your faith because he will try. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 41 in verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. See, I'm telling you, God has been with me the whole step of the way in everything I've done. I have seen God working marvelous miracles and circumstances, and I am so blessed. He, it says, do not fear or be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then the last scripture I have is Hebrews 12, verse 1. It says, therefore... Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. You see, there's been a lot of other people. We just quoted a few out of the Bible today that have gone on before us. That are already walking in heaven's gate. They've already there. They've already gone through and done things. They are, they have not, they're not only witnessing. They are a witness unto what God can do in their life. They've stood the time of, of the test of their faith. In their situations. But we have to. Like the Bible. Like this verse says. Throw off everything that hinders. Throw off discouragement. Throw off fears. Throw off doubt. Amen. And a sin that so easily entangles. Amen. And let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Who is the author and finisher of our faith. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, God is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus has already done it all for us. He is there before us. He's accomplished it. The victory is ours. We just have to keep telling the devil, get out, leave my victory alone. I have it. It's mine and I'm taking it in Jesus name. Amen. I love you all so much, praying for you daily, believing God for His circum for your circumstances to to turn around for your behalf. Amen. So we're sta I'm standing in prayer with you. I'm standing in faith. If you have other situations you want me to pray about, please send me a text, a message, or let me know. I'd be glad to do it. I'm gonna stand in faith. But I want to pray with you before I get off of here today. And bless you, <clears throat> excuse me, to have a wonderful, beautiful day. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give over to you all of our cares, our concerns, our frustrations, our fret. Lord, we just cast it over at your feet. We're going to trust you to move us through this situation. Move us through our circumstance to the other side. We are more than overcomers through Christ because you've given us the ability to do that. You have been our, our overcomer. You've already overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so this morning, right now, we grab a hold of faith and we press on like you called us to do. And we'll do all that you called us. Let our light so shine in other places. Let people see the hope and the faith and the joy of the Lord within us. And let us be a great witness. Father, I thank you right now for every person that's watching and is going to watch. Lord, I pray for them that they are strengthened with might by in the inner man by the Spirit of God. I pray for them to be healed from the top of their head all the way through every part, every portion of their bodies, every organ, every tissue, every cell, every blood vessel, all the muscles, every tendon, in Jesus' name, all the way down to the very tips of their toes. I thank you, Father. Your healing power is at work within them right now. And Lord, I thank you for the finances. I thank you for every seed that's been sown, that they've sown into your ministry, into your kingdom, that you bless it a hundredfold return. I thank you, Father, for filling up, that you are faithful to your word. You're filling up their bank accounts. You're filling up their, their cabinets. You're filling them up, Father. They are full. They are because they're generous givers. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you for blessing them. I give you glory 
in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful day. Keep in touch with me. I miss you all. Love you so much. God bless. Mm -hmm.